Hello my friends and welcome, let's check out the latest update from Ukraine. Actually, Russia took the ground near to Pervomaisk. So before they tried to advance to Severne, they even claimed that they took the small village under control, which is not true, and they start to advance to Pervomaisk, which is over here all across those lakes. We even may check the timeline, so it was yesterday and it is today just the short advantage of the Russian army in this area, but we may see the gradual expansion of the grey area. Definitely the fights are ongoing very close to Peromaiske. We see that Russia is switching to the secondary tasks. Because before their main idea was to advance to this side and also to this side encircling Avdivka. Now they try to get some of the villages here, which is illogical if you conduct this big operation. On the north part of Avdivka there is no more advancement of the Russian army, they were completely stopped by Ukrainian defenders. Today they also claim that they have took Stepova under control, which is just their propaganda achievement. Definitely, they're just in Krasnohorivka, a little bit advanced towards this place. From what I understood, the Ukrainian army was more or less ready for the Russian advancement, that is why we caused them severe losses. Why it was difficult to understand the intentions of the Russian army near to Avdivka, because it is a very urban environment over here, very crowded place. Let's go to the satellite images and you'll understand. So, this is Donetsk and other settlements. We which are actually non-stop living urban territories, so it's hard to understand for our surveillance whether Russia is concentrating their forces in Donetsk for the future defense or whether they are going to move them on the north, so it's very hard for us to understand the intentions for the Russians over here. Plus, there is almost no distance between Avdivka and Donetsk, so Russia may send reinforcements with a short shoulder, I would say. Unlike, for example, on the south front lines where they have to send the forces across the Rostov and Don through the railroad, which is very close to the front lines, or they have to send the reinforcements using the Kerch Bridge, and this distance is enormous. For Donetsk and Avdivka, they may concentrate the reinforcements near to Luhansk or in this area and send them very, very fast. It is not really far away from the Russian border. About the north part of the front lines, we may see that Ukraine successfully defended Kupensk, Russia is unable to move. Moreover, as I said to you, the Ukrainian army successfully performs the counteroffensive operation in this particular place. Nevertheless, Russia decided to attack from Orlanka in this way, so we may say the update of the deep state military map, they took just one field here. I believe that this Russian attack is not that significant and mostly used to deflect the attention of the Ukrainian army to this place, and then they won't, still want to advance to Kupensk from this place. On this military map we also have the fire reports indications, and it's hard to judge because it's the dry season in Ukraine and many fields unfortunately caught fire. But still we may see the majority of the fire spots near to the front lines. I heard the opinion from many of the experts on the social media that Ukraine may use the GLSDB missiles or gliding missiles or gliding bombs to target the Kerch bridge. Those tools are coming to Ukraine very soon, so now let's check out the range and whether it is possible to really target this part of peninsula of Crimea. Let's put it to Orihiv somewhere over here and you see that it's really far away from reaching the Kerch bridge. But if we put it in Kherson Oblast, you may see that Ukraine may cut the Russian supplies from the Kerch bridge. The GLSDB missiles are very precise, but they're not very huge like attackums. That is why they're unable to kaboom the Russian supplies like bridges, but they may damage those. Also, it is the perfect tool to target the Russian ammunition depots or command centers, as Ukraine usually does with the standard Harmus missiles. If we check out the enemy concentration based on their mobile network usage, you may see that Russia definitely is ready for the future attack. They have many of the resources on the east part of Ukraine. On the south, they concentrated at the very specific spots. However, this information also might not be correct and we have the attention notice about it. Nevertheless, I think that it is more or less correct and that is why I also expect the big landing operation of Ukraine in Crimea. Because actually there are not many Russian forces over here if we speak about the fighting infantry. But Russia uses Crimea as for their 
logistic hub. Speaking about the south front lines in general, we may see that Ukraine stopped attacking near to Velika Novosilka towards the Russian positions. They just keep the Russian army over there. So this is the standstill situation. Here in Orihiv direction, Ukraine propels forward but very slow. We may also say that Ukrainian counterattack in this area for the moment stalled. I expect that Ukrainian army might take Nova Prokopivka and Verbova this year, but probably not more than that. Unfortunately, we should wait for the next wave of the Ukrainian counterattack. By the way, there was the remark from Vladimir Putin today. He said that Ukraine will counterattack with a massive force on the south direction. He also said that Russia is waiting for it. It is not the secret for the Russian intelligence and they are ready to repel it. Well, anyways, we'll see. I heard the information that Ukraine is collecting the sources near to the south, not that close to the front lines, so it might strike Russia, but not today, because Russia is performing their small attacks in Avdiivka and on the east. It's better to repel them at first and then concentrate the forces on the south. But unfortunately, we have the small window for that to perform this mission, because the winter is coming soon. During the winter time, Ukraine may still get some of the ground, but I don't believe that our forces would be capable to reach Tokmak or Melitopol this winter. So I bet that this is the goal for 2024. Putin also was asked about the situation in Avdivka. He said that Russia moved to the active defense in that place. So what happened to the active offense that Russia performed a couple of days ago? Probably you already know the answer, they were totally kaput over there. Putin also said that they're looking for Kupensk and Liman. He's searching for the small victory just to announce that he is going for the new elections in 2024. We all understand that Russian elections are not real, as well as Belarusian elections, but still there were lots of the riots in Belarus in 2020, then Lukashenko got 80 with something percent, but in real he got not more than 3 percent. People of Belarus understood that they've been fooled and they start the protests. Putin is afraid of that. Because even with the fake elections he might lose the power, it happened already in the Russian history few times. The strategy for Putin in this war is just to wait. They cannot reach significant success on the front lines, so Ukrainian side does. The only goal for Russia is to cut the military supplies for Ukraine, they openly speak about it. So they wait for the new elections in the United States in 2024 and also many of the elections happening in the European Union. Based on the Slovakian experience, the country which supported Ukraine a lot and now cancelled all of the support because of the new leader who took the power recently. Unfortunately, it is one more confirmation bias for Putin to continue wait and continue this war until at least the end of 2024. Nevertheless, President Biden is sure that they have the political political will and also resources to support Ukraine and also Israel. He said that the United States is the most powerful country in the world, not in the current world, but in the history of the world. Well, actually he is right with the weaponry that the United States have. They overrate many of the combined armies on our globe. But again, not everything is dependent on Biden's opinion or his political will. The politician situation in the United States is too complicated and as you can see it may influence the military supplies to Ukraine. Nevertheless, I expect the United States to support Ukraine longer, even if there will be the other president in 2024. Ukraine is looking to lease the air defense systems from our partners for this winter because Russia is going to attack the civilian infrastructure of Ukrainian cities. We already have the information about it coming from President Zelensky and many of the intelligence services from our allies and Ukrainian one. Definitely it may be so during the cold period of this year. Let's go back to the front lines for today. It wasn't that hot as usual as it happened a couple of days ago in Avdivka. Nevertheless, Russia has losses. They lost one more Uragan system. It was kaputed by Ukrainian defenders. It is the most powerful rocket artillery system which Russia has. Russians didn't go on offensive towards Avdivka today, but they received the artillery fire from the Ukrainian side. Oh my god, we have just received the Oryx resource update for the vehicle losses for Ukraine and Russia. 
You see the ratio, Russia lost 173 vehicles, Ukraine lost 37. It is for the recent week, but you can see that Russia loses lots of the armored vehicles, not even speaking about the infantry in those vehicles, and all of that analysis is based on the actual footages and videos that are coming from the front lines. So definitely we have the evidence for the particular unit. By the way, my friends, I'm unable to publish the actual footages of those vehicles kabooms. For that, please check out my Telegram channel. I post there regularly the news about Ukraine and not only, plus the content that I'm unable to upload on this platform. So let's speak more about the statistics because the numbers that I see they are outstanding. It's the first time I see this ratio. For example, for the tanks, Russia lost 43 of the tanks for the last week. Ukraine lost 4 of the tanks. 43 and 4. The infantry vehicles like BMPs, BMDs, all of that with caterpillars. Russia lost 34 of the vehicles. Ukraine, 7. For the BTRs, MRAPs and all of the armored vehicles with the wheels, Russia lost 27. Ukraine, 13. This is kind of usual one. Artillery, Russia 31, Ukraine 6. Unfortunately, Ukraine lost two of the airplanes, one Suhoi 25 and one Antonov 26. Both of those were targeted by the Russian long-range Landsat drones. For the army supply vehicles, Russia lost 26, Ukraine 2. You may see that with those losses, Russia is not learning on their own mistakes. Previously, they already done those mistakes. They were totally ambushed in Belohorivka in 2022, in Vuhledar this winter, and here again, so they have the political goal to take Avdivka by any coast and they sent more and more reinforcements, uncontrollably sending them to the very hot places. This strategy might work if the enemy is not prepared for the offensive action, but Ukraine is prepared for it. It is absolutely no-go situation for any sort of the attack, but it seems like the Russian generals are not understanding those principles. Ukraine also made those mistakes before, but now the strategy changed. Now Ukraine assaults with small groups. That's why we have less losses in offensive operations compared to the Russian army, for example, on the south. But Russia has just tremendous, huge losses. The ratio is 1 to 4 or sometimes 1 to 5. Let's go to the brief analysis of the situation around Israel. The ground military operation in Gaza by Israel should have been started the last night, but Israel cancelled it because of the clouds over Gaza which are not allowing the drone operators to target their aims. But still we understand that it will be conducted. The United States of America sent one more air carrier, Dwight Eisenhower. It is already within the operational range from Palestine, Israel and probably Iran. In its turn, Iran said again that it may potentially intervene into this war against Israel. The United States officials also warned Israel about this scenario. But honestly, I don't think that Iran is capable to take part in this war directly. There were also some of the attacks reported on the northern Israel today. Israel as usually responded. The attacks were conducted by the Hezbollah group, which is based on the south Lebanon. As for the Gaza Strip, Israel already collected lots of the forces near to the north part of the Gaza. According to the latest information, many of the civilians were able to leave their homes from the northern part to Gaza, so they are now somewhere over here. Not all of them, but as it was reported, around 600,000 people left their homes. It's just terrible, but that's the only thing they can do to save their lives. Hamas, as usual, tries to stop them from leaving their homes because they want to use their citizens as the life shields against the Israeli attacks. China, in its official statement, already said that Israel is using too much force against the recent Hamas attack on its territory. Well, I don't think that there is the force in the world that may potentially stop the Israeli operation in Gaza. Israel is determined to finish Hamas with this operation. That is what they proclaimed. But it's not the easy operation and it may last for many. Guys, I was busted by one of the Swiss media resources. They say that I reposted the wrong information about the Israeli forces advancement. Definitely, I reposted the video on my Telegram channel from the Ukrainian Telegram channel. 
which by the time was covering the news. Sorry, I switched off the volume. I will put the link to the original news information. So definitely this information is fake. This video was filmed four years ago. So we have my face, my name and the fake news that were spread by me on the Telegram channel by the simple repost. I apologize for my Telegram community because sometimes I don't have the time or ability to fact check the information. I don't have the army of journalists working for me 24-7, but I promise you to analyze the information more deeply before I publish it. I also call you to cross check the information you receive from any kind of the resource, also from me. I could be biased, especially if we speak about the Ukrainian topic. By the way, you also help a lot in a comment section and in a telegram chat because you may get the information from the third resource that I am not aware of and there were some of the cases where I corrected the information based on the proofs that I got from my audience. Thank you a lot my friends, nice teamwork. My friends, now don't forget to press the like to this video and also if you want to support my channel, there will be some of the links in the video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and the sponsors of my YouTube channel. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.